our age could be defined uh, in many ways, one of which is definitely the age of uh, privacy or the loss of privacy, uh, as it were. There are many reasons why privacy has become such a, a major uh, issue. We just came out of the age of anonymity, uh, thanks to uh, huge cities where you are not uh, really private, but you are anonymous. You are the leaf in the forest. It's not that nobody knows about the leaf, but there are so many that nobody cares. If you read Sherlock Holmes in London, Dr. Jackie and Mr. Hyde in Edinburgh, you can see that that's the time when we started acquiring a sense of anonymity, that the big city, you can be anyone and nobody knows. Now, coming out of that moment in human history, of course, the uh, immediate reaction, the cold shower that we got through digital technologies that all of a sudden were monitoring us in every step, tailoring services to our own information flows and so on, what was kind of shocking. So part of the shock is cultural because of what came before. But part uh, of the transformation uh, linked to uh, privacy is due to the fact that never before uh, we uh, enjoyed or suffered from technologies that could be so minutely, fine grainly tailored to every single step we take in our lives so cheaply. The right to be forgotten is um, a, a misnamed uh, debate that we are having, especially in Europe, uh, on uh, the right to have some uh, uh, links removed when they refer to personal information that is uh, legally available online from the search engine. The European Court of Justice decided about that particular case and gave some very, very broad lines of action, but it left unspecified a number of specific issues. Who has the right to ask, for example, for the removal of links? Not public figures, but who counts as a public figure? big debate. Uh, is there a right to uh, have those uh, links removed uh, from any search engine or only national search engine, or only European or internationally? Again, unspecified big debate. And these are just two aspects or many others. The debate is not about uh, having or not having individual control on some bits of information on a search engine referring to some other information. It's actually about uh, more broadly understood about who is going to control the sort of generation of information in the future. Is it politics, society, or is it business? Basically, is it Brussels or California? As we know, uh, politics has been distracted by caring about things, uh, thought that this was not happening, didn't see it coming. And the recent debate on the right to be forgotten could be interpreted within this larger framework. And politics basically is playing a catching up game. Has lost um, the, the first round, missed the train, didn't understand that the new political power was going to be heavily influenced by the digital industry, which simply generates demand and questions. Doesn't own the information, doesn't produce the information. The current presidency in the United States, uh, the Obama presidency, the people that advise the president when it comes to IT policies are both former Google employees. So you can see that this is not just a fabrication out of intellectual suspicions. It's actually that's happening under our eyes power is adapting. I like to call it grey power, the power of influencing those who have the power to influence. So not the political power, not the military power, but the power behind the political power, the power behind the military power. Uh, if you think in terms of who has real power, the people who own the cabs or Uber, who doesn't own anything, but puts the demand uh, in touch with, with the offer. Who has real power? Amazon that doesn't produce books, or the publishers who have to be uh, forced kind of way uh, or adapting to the new uh, context. Basically this um, way of uh, putting together uh, uh, people who want something and people who have something to offer uh, in the middle is uh, the new grey power uh, in the future and is something that I think society and politics should take very seriously into account. When things change dramatically the temptation, almost irresistible, is to go faster, think faster, act more quickly. But that is a trap. When things change dramatically, it is time to take more steps back. And the analogy I can provide is the following. The bigger the gap, the longer the run up. It would be a mistake to say, look, there's such a great difference happening in front of our eyes. We need to get closer to you know, the gap. That would be a secure way of making mistakes. If there was a time now, in recent uh, uh, human history, where we needed more reflection, more thinking, and therefore deeper thinking and slower thinking, so that the future will be something that we are proud of, and that future generations will be thankful that we planned that, that way, but well, this is the time.
So the message is, think more deeply, think more carefully, don't rush.